it's time for a few exercises on computed properties and watchers. For exercise number one, we have an array of movie objects, which we want to format a bit when outputting them. We could of course do this directly within the template, but we're not going to do that because we just learned about a cool new thing called computed properties. The movies should be output on a list and the format should be the name of the movie followed by the release year within parentheses. You should add a computed property that returns an array of strings with this format. The second exercise is about adding a movie of your choice to the movie's data property and then adding a watcher which outputs that movie in an alert dialog. I'll be back in a moment with my solutions and I hope that you give it a try. Alright, now that you've had a chance to give it a go, here are my solutions. For the first exercise, I need to do two things. Add a computer property to reformat the data and use a loop to output this reformatted data. First, the computer property. I will add the computed object first of all, down here in the view instance. So computed and an empty object. And within this object, I will add a property named formatted movies, like so, which should be a function. Now there are many ways in which I could reformat the data into a string array, but I'm going to use a rather short and concise way of doing it, by using the arrays map method. This method takes a function as an argument and invokes this function for each element in an array. It then creates a new array with each value that the function returns. Since I want to operate on the movie's data property, I can call the map method on this array. So this.movies.map and this method takes a function and each movie will be passed as an argument, like so. Within the function, I can simply return the movie name concatenated with the release year and closed within parentheses. So let's return movie.name plus a space and opening parentheses. And then within here, I'll add the year and I'll close the parentheses once again, like so. The map method returns the new array. So all I need to do is to return this right here. So that's it for the JavaScript part of things. Now I can use this computer property together with the v4 directive to loop through the strings. So let's go up here, say v4 equals movie in formatted movies, which is my computer property. And here I'll just output movie. This should give me the correct result, and indeed it does. As for the second exercise, I'll begin by adding an event listener for the click event on the button. So v on click, and I'll name this listener add movie. The listener will be implemented within the methods object as we have seen before. So I'll just add this object and add movie, which is a function. Within this function, I'll simply push a new object to the movies array. So this.movies.push and an object. In here, I'll add a name property. I'll say the fast and the furious and the year was 2001. With that in place, it's time to add a watcher, which will react to changes on the movie's data property. Remember that the name of the watcher must match the name of the data property that it should watch, which is movies in this case. So I'll go down here. Let me just add some spaces so we can see what we're doing. I'll add the watch object. Whoops, it's supposed to be an object. And in here, I'll add a movies watcher, which is a function taking the new value 
of the data property. So the function takes the new value of the data property as an argument and not the element that was just pushed to the array. Therefore, we need to retrieve the last element from the array in order to output its details within an alert dialog. So in here, I'll say new movie and I'll grab the last movie within the array at the last index. And so I'll use this in my alert saying new movie dot name plus from and then I'll add the year new movie dot year and was just added like so. And that's it. Clicking the button should now show a dialog and in fact it doesn't. That's because I missed an S here. So let's try again. And now we see a dialog displaying the movie name and the release year. So what happened here was that we first pushed an element to the movies array, which our watcher reacted to. And the watcher received the new value of the data property and not the element that was pushed to it. And that's why we needed to grab the last element within the array in our watcher function. 